return with our awesome guest live in the studio, Patrick P. Money Dow. P. Money, what's happening, man? What's going on, Steven? Glad to be back. I haven't been kicked off yet, but, you know, there's still time. You have, <laughs> you have not been kicked off yet. I haven't had my man Patrick Dow, breaking news reporter for Touchdown Alabama Magazine live on set here with us. So we get into now the first topic of the conversation. It's one that's the big news. Doug Marone no longer at the University of Alabama in terms of coaching the offensive line. Done after one season as Nick Saban continuing to make upgrades here on his coaching staff. He poaches Eric Wolford from Kentucky with a footprint in the SEC to be the offensive line coach for the Tide, the 50-year-old from Ohio. And I've mentioned this before. Coach Saban is doing a different rubric here in terms of bringing in assistant coaches. He's looking at, number one, you know, what do you specialize in? Number two, do you have a footprint in the SEC? Do you understand this conference, know this conference, the, import of the, the importance of this conference? And number three, can you bring in those high-end recruits and develop the talent on the field? And, uh, you know, for Doug Marone – for Doug Marone, uh, good coach, not saying he was a bad coach, good coach, but sometimes uh, sometimes you can be at the right church but sitting at the wrong pew. And what that means is you can be a good coach, just not the ideal fit for that respective team. Uh, it's kind of like in the NFL, you got to get the owner right, the GM right, the coach right, the quarterback right for it all to flow. And in college football, in particular Alabama football, you got to be a fit for the Crimson Tide. And, and as I look, and as I go to, you know, my, my man Patrick down here. So, P, when you look at Doug Marone, I mean, in your opinion, good coach, but did, did you ever feel like he was a fit in Tuscaloosa? Yeah, I, I think you nailed it right there. I mean, he, he, there's a reason why he was in the NFL for so long, being a head coach. But I agree. I don't. I don't think he was necessarily the right fit because. Just looking at this past year, this wasn't an Alabama offensive line that was really up to par in terms of what Nick Saban is used to producing. I mean, it was really bipolar in a sense, especially early on in the year against like against teams like Florida. I mean, Florida. it took 12 yeah. games to get the center right. Yeah, I mean, I, I, battling some injuries there too, Darren Dalcor going out, and just it, it never really seemed to mesh. I know Evan Neal, who's gonna is gonna be one of the one of the top players taken in the draft, but other than him, there really was no consistency throughout those other four guys in the line. I mean, just looking at the Iron Bowl, I mean, that was one of the worst, I, and at least for the first three quarters, arguably four. That was one of the worst performances I've seen from an offensive line in the Saban era. So, I, uh, Doug Marone, he's expected to be back in the NFL. That's probably where he belongs. It just didn't really work out at Alabama. As we look at now, going into the credentials here of uh, Coach Wolford from uh, Kentucky, number one, going back to he specializes in coaching offensive linemen. He has 21 years of experience, including – stints in the SEC with South Carolina, two stints in South Carolina, and then one with the Kentucky Wildcats. The reason why I like this hire, he played on the offensive line, offensive guard at Kansas State from 1990 to 93. So he knows how to operate in that phone booth, getting your hands on guys, putting a man on a man, a hat on a hat, driving guys off the football, setting that physical smash mouth, run the football tone. So he played at Kansas State, he played also one season in the NFL with the Arizona Cardinals. And just when I look at this from, from, from perspective, when you look at Coach Wolford, he played the position, he coached at the position. But for me personally, Pat, when I look at him, he kind of reminds me of uh, the Jeff Stoutmans, the Joe Pendries, if you will, those old school guys that say, let's put – hand in the dirt, let's drive on guys, let's mean business here, run the football, let's get these counter blocks, let's get these kick out blocks, these pancake blocks, let's drive guys off the ball, let's be physical, let's be fundamental, let's be rough, let's be tough, let's be rugged, and uh, going back to you know, his past season, you know, there were some moments where you looked at Coach Saban, he was like, you know, can we get some of that in terms of running the football? Yes, it's about the passing game and airing it out, quarterbacks, receivers. But there was just a part of Nick Saban that to him it was like, can we get back to that rugged, rough, 
tough man-on-man running the football. With Eric Wolford in Kentucky, from, coming from Kentucky, he brings that physicalness back to Alabama. Oh, absolutely. Just look at the Kentucky team last year. The lifeblood of that team was that offensive line. They can just controlling games up front. I mean, Chris Rodriguez had a 1,000-yard year. He had a huge year running the football, Even and quarterback Will Levis running around too. I mean, it was really what helped them get to their 10-3 and record of really pushing teams around. I mean, just look at the LSU game from a year ago. Ed Orgeron was shocked about how physical that Kentucky team was. I think, look, if you know Nick Saban, he loves running the football. As much as he says they'll, they'll adapt to throw the ball around, whatever, you know deep down that he wants to get down dirty and run that football. So I think this is just – I think, that, like we were talking about fits with Doug Marone, this is a much better fit for what Alabama wants to be up front. And not only a much better fit, but just getting now – more so into what Wolford did at Kentucky. You're looking at three offensive linemen, or uh, not, not a good offensive lineman, but three in terms of Darian Kennard, uh, Luke Fortner, and also uh, Dare Rosenthal that will be NFL players. I mean, Kennard and Fortner potentially can both be first round picks. And this is a Kentucky group that won the, that was a finalist for the Joe Moore Award. You know, Kentucky finalist for the Joe Moore Award, going back to what Pat mentioned, Chris Rodriguez Jr., 1,300 yard season, you know, running the football. And Kentucky was also. They were first in the SEC in yards per carry at 5.51. They were fourth in the nation in that regard. But what impressed me the most about the season the Wildcats had under Coach Wolford as the O-line coach was on third down and short and fourth and short, and this is three yards or less, Kentucky converted 66.7%, so near 70% of their third and shorts and fourth and short shorts the Wildcats put it on the offensive line and Chris Rodriguez Jr., and they got the job done behind the physicality of this group coached by you know, Coach Wolford. And just going back to what I mentioned about, uh, about uh, Joe Pendry and, and Jeff Stoutman, when they were in Alabama, probably not the most flashiest names in the world, but they were blue-collar, they were hard hat, they were hard-nosed. Let's get our hands on guys, drive them off the ball, put them in the dirt, throw them around, be rough and tough. Let's be a physical, hardcore offensive line, offensive front, and unit. Mario Cristobal did some of the same things. I know a lot of people liked what Kyle Flood did in 2020. Kyle Flood a bit more finesse at times, but we still saw a group that won the Joe Moore Award in 2020. And Pat, I feel like that's the biggest thing. After winning the Joe Moore Award in 2020 and then not even being a finalist for it in 2021 this past season, I think that also played a role in this move because Coach Saban is one. He's not trying to go backwards. He's always trying to go forward and no. progress. So I feel like not being a finalist for that award, that played a role in this move too. Oh, no, I definitely agree. And I want to go back to the statistic you said about the execution on the third and short and fourth and shorts. I mean, that's an area where Alabama really struggled in this past season. I mean, just look at the Texas A&M, A&M game where how many missed opportunities did they have converting down in the red zone because, uh, they, absolutely. because they couldn't get three yards. So I think that, that might be an area that really that, that tipped Nick Saban off to wanting to bring in Wolford and really kind of fix that on the offensive line. Big hire here from the Crimson Tide, bringing in Coach Eric Wolford from uh, Kentucky and, and a guy that brought physicality to that group, toughness to that group on the offensive line. Like I mentioned, Darian Kennard, guys like Luke Fortner, Dare Rosenthal, going to be NFL players, going to be big picks here. And going back to to, uh, to Wolford, he produced six 1,000-yard seasons as, as his offensive lines have produced six 1,000-yard seasons. And not just Chris Rodriguez, but you look at he had a running back at South Carolina that had 1,000 yards. He had running backs uh, at, at different places he coached at to pick up those 1,000-yard seasons. And then Will Nevis, the quarterback for the Wildcats, he was sacked only – he was sacked 22 times. That was 17 times fewer than what Bryce Young was sacked, which was 39. So, uh, Coach Saban, getting back to that rubric of having uh, the coach that's got the experience, the specialty of coaching certain positions, Wolford with the offensive line, getting back to the guy that has that footprint in the SEC – 
Wolford has it with Kentucky and with South Carolina and getting back to recruiting those high-end guys. Wolford, big-time recruiter, but he can also develop, teach, instruct, and coach these guys to the next level. Pat, it's going to be fun to watch this guy when he gets out on the field for spring ball, man. Absolutely, man. Can't, can't wait to see what they can put out this year.